Dear men, understand that this is true. The world is in haste, and it approaches the end, and because it is ever worldly, the longer it lasts, the worse it becomes, and so it must necessarily greatly worsen before the coming of Antichrist, because of the sins of the people. And indeed it will become then fearful and terrible throughout the world. Understand also completely that the devil has deceived this people too much, and that there has been little faith among men, though they speak fair words, and too many crimes have gone unchecked in the land, and there were never many men who considered what steps should be taken as earnestly as one ought to do, but each day one added evil to evil and committed crime and much injustice altogether too widely throughout all this nation. And also, we have for that reason endured many injuries and insults, and if we shall look for any remedy, then we must deserve better of God than we have done hitherto, because with great deservings we have earned the miseries which lie upon us, and with very great deservings we must obtain the remedy at the hand of God if henceforth things shall become better. Lo, we know very well that a very great violation will require a great remedy, and that a very great fire much water, if a man wishes to extinguish the fire at all. And great is the need for every man that he should henceforth earnestly respect God's law and pay God's dues rightly. Among heathen peoples no one would dare to withhold little or much of that which is ordained for the honour of false gods, and everywhere we withhold God's dues altogether too often. And among heathen peoples no one dare lessen, within or without the temple, any of the things which are brought for the false gods and proffered as gifts, and we have entirely despoiled the house of God inside and outside. And the servants of God are everywhere deprived of honour and protection. And among heathen people, no one would dare ill-treat the servants of the false gods in any way, as now one does to the servants of God too widely, where Christian men ought to honour God's law and protect God's servants. But it is true what I say. There is need for that remedy, because the rights of God have now for a long time been neglected throughout this nation and every region, and the laws of the people have deteriorated in every region, and the laws of the people have deteriorated altogether too often since Edgar died, and holy places are everywhere too open to attack and the houses of God are too completely deprived of ancient rites, and stripped within of all that is fitting, and religious orders have now for a long time been greatly despised, and widows are forced to marry unrighteously, and too many men are reduced to poverty, and poor men are wretchedly deceived and cruelly cheated, and wholly innocent, sold out of this land far and wide into the possession of foreigners and through cruel injustice, children in the cradle are enslaved for petty theft widely throughout this nation, and the rights of free men suppressed, and the rights of thralls curtailed, and the rights of charity neglected. And, to speak most briefly, God's laws are hated, and his commands despised. And therefore, through the anger of God, we all suffer frequent insults. Let him acknowledge it who may, and this harm will become common, though one may not think so to all this nation, unless God will save us. For it is evident and plain in all our lives that we have previously sinned more often than we have improved, and therefore much is attacking the people. Things have not prospered now for a long time at home, or beyond our land. But there has been warfare, and famine, burning and bloodshed in every district time and again, and theft 
and murder, plague and pestilence, moraine and disease, malice and hate and plundering of robbers have harmed us very severely, and excessive levies of tribute have greatly afflicted us, and bad weather has very often caused bad harvests, because in this country there has been, as it may seem for many years now, many crimes and unstable loyalties everywhere among men. Now, very often, a kinsman gives protection to a kinsman no more than to a stranger, neither a father to son, nor at times a son to his own father, nor a brother to another brother, nor has any one of us arranged his life as he should, neither the clergy according to their vows, nor the laity according to the law, but altogether too often we make our desires into laws for us, and we have kept neither the teachings nor the laws of God nor of men as we should. Nor does anyone in a loyal manner think on anyone else as rightly as he should, but almost everyone has deceived and injured another by word and deed and especially foully, almost everyone stabs another from behind in shameful attack, let him do more if he may. For here in the country there are great betrayals of trust in respect of God and in respect of men, and also here in the land are many traitors in various ways, and it is the greatest betrayal of all in the world that a man should betray the soul of his Lord, and it is also a great betrayal in the world that a man should betray his lord to death, or drive him into exile while he lives, and both have happened in this land. Edward was betrayed, and afterwards killed, and after that burned, and too many godparents and godchildren have been killed widely throughout this nation, in addition to far too many other innocent people who have been slain far too often in every district and far too many holy places have declined because some men have been placed in them as they should never have been if one wished to show respect in God's sanctuary. And far too many Christian people have been sold out of this land now all the time. And all this is hateful to God. Let him believe it who will. And it is shameful to speak of that which happens too widely and is too terrible to know what too many do often who commit that crime, who contribute together and buy a woman as a common purchase and with that one woman practice abomination one after another and each after another most like dogs that have no regard for filth and afterwards they sell for a price into the possession of enemies, that creature of God and his own purchase that he dearly bought. Also, we know well where that wretched crime has occurred, that a father has sold his son for a price, and the son his mother, and one brother has sold another into the possession of strangers. And all these are monstrous and terrible deeds, let him understand who will. And yet, what harms this nation is greater and also more widespread. Many are forsworn and utterly perjured and pledges are broken time and again. And it is obvious in this nation that the anger of God violently oppresses us. Let him perceive it who can. And lo, how may a greater shame fall on men through the anger of God than it frequently does on us for our own deeds. Though any thrall runs away from his lord and turns from the Christian to the Viking life, and after that it happens that an armed conflict takes place between the thane and the thrall, if the thrall kills the thane, no guild is payable to all of his kindred. And if the thane kills the thrall whom he owned beforehand, he pays the guild to a thane. Very loathsome laws and shameful exactions are common among us because of the anger of God. Let him understand it who can. And many misfortunes befall this nation time and again. Things have not prospered now for a long time at home or beyond our land, but in every region there has been warfare and hatred time and again. 
and the English have been for a long time now wholly without victory and too greatly disheartened through the anger of God and the Vikings are so strong by the consent of God that often in battle one puts to flight ten and sometimes less, sometimes more, all because of our sins and often ten or twelve, one after another shamefully insults the thane's wife and sometimes his daughter or near kinswoman while he looks on who before that happened thought himself brave and strong and manly enough and often a thrall binds very fast the thane who previously was his lord and makes him into a thrall through the anger of god alas for the wretchedness and alas for the greater humiliation which the English now endure wholly through the anger of God. Often two Vikings, or sometimes three, drive the muster of the Christian men from coast to coast, out from the midst of this nation, huddled together as, as a great shame to us all, if we could really and rightly perceive it. But all the insulting which we often endure, we requite by honouring those who insult us. We pay them continually, and they humiliate us daily. They ravage and they burn, they plunder and steal and carry off to their fleet, and lo, what other thing is clear and evident in all these events if not the anger of God? Also, it is no marvel, although misfortune befall us, because we know full well that for many years now men have too often not cared what they did in word or deed. But this nation has become, as it may appear, very corrupted by manifold sins and by many crimes, by murder and evil deeds, by avarice greed by stealing and robbery by the barter of men and pagan abuses by betrayals and trickeries by attacks on kinsmen and manslaughters by violation of holy orders and breaches of divine law by incest and various fornications and also widely as we said before by the breaking of oaths and of pledges, and by various lies, many more than there should be are lost and perjured, and the disregarding of church feasts and fasts happens widely time and again. And also, there are in the land degenerate apostates and cruel persecutors of the church and fierce tyrants, altogether too many, and everywhere despisers of divine laws and Christian customs and foolish mockers everywhere in the nation. Very often are those things which God messengers command, and most of all those things which should always by right pertain to God's law. And therefore it has now become far and wide as a very evil custom that men are now more ashamed for good deeds than for evil deeds, because too often one spurns good deeds with derision, and reviles God-fearing men altogether too much, and most of all one reproves and treats with scorn altogether too often those who love the right and have an awe of God in any matter, and because people act in this manner that they deride all that they should praise and hate too much what they should love. By this means, one brings all too many into wicked thought and into crime, so that they are not ashamed, even though they sin greatly and commit them against God himself with all. But because of vain attacks, they are ashamed to atone for their crimes as the penitential books teach, like those foolish men who for their pride will not protect themselves from harm until they cannot, however much they wish it. Here too many in the land, as it may appear, are grievously stained by the stains of sin. Here are murderers and slayers of kin and killers of priests and persecutors of monasteries, and here are perjurers and contrivers of murder, and here are harlots and child murderers, and many foul, adulterous whoremongers, and here are wizards 
and witches. And here are plunderers and, and robbers and thieves. And, to speak most briefly, a countless number of all crimes and foul deeds. And it does not shame us at all in respect of that, but it greatly puts us to shame that we begin the penance as the books teach. And that is evident in this wretched sinful people. And it does not shame us at all in respect of that, but it greatly puts us to shame that we begin the penance as the books teach. And that is evident in this wretched sinful people. Alas, many may easily think of much besides this, which one man alone might not quickly examine. So wretchedly it happens now all the time, widely throughout this nation. And indeed, let each one earnestly examine himself, and let him not delay all too long. But, lo, in the name of God, let us do as is needful for us. Protect ourselves, as we may most earnestly, lest we all perish together. There was a chronicler called Gildas in the time of the Britons, who wrote about their misdeeds, how they, by their sins, angered God so excessively that he at last allowed the army of Englishmen to conquer their homeland to destroy entirely the seasoned strength of the Britons. And that happened, as he foretold, by the plundering by powerful men and the covetousness of ill-gotten gains, by the lawlessness of the people and by bad judgments in legal cases, by the slackness of bishops and by the base cowardice of God's messengers, who all too often kept silent about the truth and mumbled with their jaws where they should have called out. Also, by the foul pride of the people and by gluttony and by manifold sins they destroy their native land and themselves perished. But let us do as there is need for us to do. Be warned by such things. What I say is true. We know of worse deeds among the English than we heard anywhere among the Britons. And therefore there is great need for us to give thought about ourselves and to intercede earnestly with God himself and let us do as there is need for us to do. Turn to good and in some part renounce evil and very earnestly atone for what we have transgressed. And let us love God and follow God's laws and very earnestly perform that which we or those who are our sponsors of baptism promised when we received baptism. And let us order our words and deeds rightly and earnestly, cleanse our thoughts and carefully honour oath and pledge, and maintain some loyalty among us without evil practice. And let us often reflect on the great judgment to which we all shall come, and earnestly save ourselves from the surging fire of hellish torment and earn for ourselves the glories and the joys which God has prepared for those who do his will in the world. May God help us. Amen. <laughs>